You know that big metal tower in Paris that everyone likes to visit? You know, the one that takes 1,600 steps to reach the top? Well, they don't let people do stunts off of that very often. <laughs> Except today's guest. Got a little special exception. It's so crazy that you guys really shot that. Now this legend is not only a stunt performer turned coordinator turned director, but he's also an amazing human being. J.J. Perry, please tell us more about yourself. Uh, I've been a stuntman for 33 years. I've been very fortunate to get in this business and work with some of the greats and the greats and the greats. We're gonna get some stories directly from the source here. Insane stories, like jumping off of a mountain with Andy Chang in Hawaii. This is gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Launching a flaming car off of a ramp in reverse. He might have gotten killed. I thought he was gonna get killed. And literally folding a person in half in his directorial debut. And you should have seen Jamie's face the first time he folded her. He was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a banger for you today. So without further ado, let's jump in. Who? We're gonna kick things off with this fight scene from Day Shift, and when I saw it, I had never really seen anything like this before. True. It's pretty, a pretty amazing scene to open a movie with. Yeah, this is the creepy, creepity, creepity, and then I wanted to, the audience to think, what's, what is he doing? Right. Telling the story of the guillotine wire. I was a big fan of flying guillotine back from the 70s. Yep. Mm. Actually clearing all his mm -hmm. Trying to do a tactical, practical reality plus 20%. Oh no. What are you doing in my room? Oh. Buckshot mouthwash, baby. Sorry, Grandma. <laughs> I actually wanted to have my mom play this character, but because of COVID, it was we were unable to bring her. Oh, wow. Yeah. The first girl that went into the gut ratcheted was Alette Craddock. We're pretty much from this moment on, we are with this fight double. Shy. Shy, Shy DeBro. DeBro. Shy comes in here. Shy is a ballistic nightmare. She's so badass. Yes, she is. Who was the you, double for Jamie? Uh, we had Travis Parker, who is a dear, dear friend of mine, an amazing stuntman. He's been on the road with us for quite a while, and he's definitely a huge asset. I love that mirror shot. Yeah. yeah so so we definitely wanted to play into vampire lore, and you know why they can't see? Because old mirrors are made with silver in them. Oh. So, so this oh is what we call my I did not know that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now we're into a contortionist named Jordan, and this girl was amazing, a real trooper, her first movie. Here comes Motorola, three, two, one. <laughs> we call that the Motorola. Okay. Like when you close, close the phone. The <laughs> Motorola. Here comes this is a this is a standing Motorola coming. Oh my god. It's a reverse Motorola. And you should have seen Jamie's face the first time he folded her. He was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, Bubba, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we shot all of these reactions in reverse. Okay. Oh, so we would start them in their second position and wire them out in their first position. So there's a little bit of a bump that would happen. It would be three, two, one, between the un of one, there was a bobblehead, and then on the gut of go, we would pull them out. Interesting. I mean, it looks great. It's such a smart idea. Because like, doing it forwards with a contortionist, I imagine you're gonna over well, bend, over stretch. So, here's the problem. Contortions are amazing athletes, but it's all slow twitch muscle. Right. There's no fast twist fiber there. So if you pull them hard, and they're already contorted, you will break something or pull something, for right. sure. And we spent two sessions of four days figuring figuring out all of these gags. Because I promised that it would work, but I didn't know for sure. Right. So I kind of hung it out there, and as soon as we got that done, that's when I was like, we're on one. We mixed like a little bit of Lucha Libre yep. and a little bit of like practical MMA because that would be called a standing crucifix in, in MMA. Yep. And I also like the crucifix look, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 the Holy God. Ghost. Right <laughs> so that's, that's a real person reverse. contorted on the fireplace into that position. My whole mantra to this movie is we're doing everything in camera. In 1990 when I got out here, there was no way you could say we're going to fix it in post. You had to be a clever filmmaker. Yep. You had to think of a way to get it done. And now we use VFX as an enhancement. Like there's no way that I could have shot her with a shotgun and had a person heal. So we right. had visual effects help us with that. But this is all practical in camera That's reverse so photography. Dope. You know, like we had 42 days to shoot this movie and we're in the middle of a pandemic. So we were under the gun. We didn't have a lot of time. There was no time for mistakes. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had to rely on crafty filmmaking and good skilled departments. Yeah. This is probably one of the most fun films of the year. 
that I got to see. And it's all because a lot of it's in the frame. You see all of it happening. And the fact that you use such cool techniques, combining contortionism with reverse camera, we haven't seen it before. And it made it so much fun and I loved it. So thank you very much. No, no, my pleasure. And it's, you know, like I, I can't take credit for it. I had this amazing team. Like I was surrounded by these hitters and also my production crew, my camera department, my art department, my production designer. You know, I was like every morning we laced our shoes up tight. We had a coffee and we hit the ground running. I'm so grateful. So it's not on me. It's on the team. team. It's on the Absolutely. team for sure. I'm usually the weakest link in the team and that's not always by design. That's just my... <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. Nice, nice, Amazing. Nice, nice. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. In studio, we actually have two people who actively use BetterHelp for therapy. We talked to Griffin last time. He gave some great insight, but also Dean, this boy right here. Yeah, off and on for the past couple of years, I'll do like a couple months here, a couple months there. It's like a little tune-up. I always leave feeling like this lightness of just like, oh, Everything's fine. One of the biggest selling points to me was the, you know, they say there's over 30,000 therapists in the network and they kind of use a questionnaire system to identify who's who's right for you essentially. And that was the hardest thing for me is finding somebody because it takes me going there and speaking with them to have, you know, an upfront questionnaire that is filtering through all these people seems to be like a really cool way to do it. When you match with a therapist, there's a whole bio they have written up. You get a lot of information about the person, what their specialties are, and you can make a decision of like this person sounds right for me or they don't you're just at your computer and it's like it feels a lot lower stakes and you can also do phone if there's some kind of inconvenience you can't do it in your place maybe go for a walk and just do it over the phone they say that you can schedule anytime is that like hyper flexible or does it depend on your therapist like how does the scheduling side of it work literally you see a calendar and you pick a day and you see what times they have open you click on it and it automatically schedules it on the day you just hop on your little chat and then you just join a video room and you're in and if you find that you can't make your appointment you can cancel within a day and there's no charge no nothing oh, sweet. this is a journey that i'm just starting like truly here at corridor and i encourage you guys if you feel like you need it or even if you feel like you don't like make that bed take care of yourself mentally and join me let's do it together and and just see see what comes of it taking care of your mental health is one of the most important things you can do because if your cup is not full you can't pour into other people and it's important to take the time to take care of yourself so if this sounds like something you're interested in go to betterhelp.com slash corridor crew for 10 percent off your first month anyway get out of here i need to heal <laughs> Give you one more chance to reconsider. I'll give you one more chance to shut your mouth. Ooh. Oh. Oh, let's let, yeah, let's do a rundown. Andy Chang told us that you guys went out to test this stunt and he has you climb up a very steep hill. Once you guys get all up there, he's like, "Cool, this is a stunt." And he jumps down himself. And I just want to know what was in your head at that moment. <laughs> so we get to this place and we start climbing. And which seems like we've been climbing a long time. And I'm like, Andy, how about here? He's like, no, no, I keep going. And you know, we're all slipping and just lava rock and like thorns. And, and we get, I was like, Andy, how about here? You know, I'm looking down. It's like, you can't even see where we were anymore. And he goes, no, 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 keep going. And I look up and there's not much more to the top. We get about 10 feet from the top. And he said, we're going to do it from here. So I chop in with my entrenching tool. And then Tunnel Y sits down. And I'm looking at Tunnel Y's face while I'm chopping. And he's like. <laughs> And I, there's only one person that's happy up there, and that's Andy. And he goes, we're going to go from here, and he just takes off. This is gravity, brother. <laughs> you just go, and, you know, like, you got to look at it like, it's not going to kill me. I'm just going to do it. And just, yep. you know, yep, nasty. So there's oh, just some knock no, 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 in there. We ended up doing it 13 times <laughs> each. Then I, listen, hats off to Polly Leopolis and Tana Y and Marco too, Woof. man. Everybody just took gnarly wrecks. Oh ball. We all got peeled up. We yeah. all got peeled up from this. So if anybody happens to drive their Jeep over the edge in Hawaii and finds themselves rolling down a mountain, do you have any advice? Just make yourself as circular as possible <laughs> and don't, like I, we did it handcuffed. Me, oh, me, and, me and Paul had to be handcuffed. We just held on to ropes. Yeah. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah. So, but I would, I would say don't reach out. Don't it's reach. like in life when you're running down a hill that you can't stop. Either you reach the end of the hill or you crash and burn. <laughs> Best to try and reach the end yeah, of the hill. hill. Absolutely. Two shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
It was it was amazing experience. It was great to get to work with my brothers and be a part of this. You know, like we got a lot of kudos for this, and Andy did too. Yeah. So more than anything, what I'm grateful for is to have been a part of it, to be able to help my brother, who's an amazing director and a great friend, and seeing Tunnel Wise's career take off. And Paul Eliopoulos is maybe another one of the toughest people I know on the planet. And Marco Zoror too is absolutely, absolutely. rocket shipped, and uh, I'll be he'll be working with me. I'll be working with him very soon oh, again as exciting. well. So yeah, it was a. It was a great experience, you know. Do I want to go back and do it again tomorrow? Uh, no. <laughs> I'll set the cable cam and I'll say action and cut, but there I ain't trying to go on the line, son. Come on, babe. You know, and I just, like, I just worked in France on Murder Mystery 2. We got to shoot a thousand feet up on the Eiffel Tower. And here, this is one of the first shots I did when I got there. Watch this. Oh, parking oh, wow. spot isn't out there. We did this cool fight in the truck. Oh, axe in the head, geez. It was so much fun working with those two. <laughs> Sandler and Aniston are awesome. And here comes the shot in a moment as we get to France. This one, that's wow. practical. We're at the very top and no one's ever done that. Kelly Fallon, she was the one writing this. It's so crazy there. that you guys really shot that. And so I went down there and I get on the first Zoom meeting. There's 30 faces on the Zoom and they're talking about how they're gonna do this Eiffel Tower thing on a set piece. So I was like, why would you do that? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, Eiffel Tower is basically a stick of trust that stands up straight. Just take another stick of trust, put it on there, and then you have like an elevator with no floor. <laughs> and then right. like, you can do that? And I was like, hell yeah, I can do it. We can do it for sure. And he goes, you're getting on a plane tomorrow. We're making that happen. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I wasn't ready. To but yeah, I was like, cool. And at the end of the day, I understood why they wanted to do a set piece. But look, at 55 years old for me now, when I go places, like I took the job on Back in Action that I just got off. I wanted to work with Jamie again, of course, and the director, Seth Gordon, is super cool, and it's a Netflix show. But I also took the job as a challenge because I wanted to film on the Thames. I wanted to lock up London and do a motorcycle chase that paralleled the Thames. Then we'd get on the Thames and do a massive boat chase. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to shoot on the Eiffel Tower. I want to do things that haven't been done. You know, like I want to check those things off my list. This bucket list shit. Hell so. yeah. What I'd like to do next is jump a motorcycle over the White House and then maybe <laughs> jump a car over the Kremlin. There and you if go. They let me, you know, maybe something like that. that is sick. <laughs> have you done a lot of helicopter work? I have. So in the army, I worked on a helicopter quite a bit. It was different. We weren't filming. So there's a series of like helicopter made for TV action films that came out in the 70s, and you would never see this today. I just want to. What's the name of the show? This is Deadly Encounter. Yes. Dude, no room for error. <laughs> and somebody was Too listen. Long. And somebody, somebody was handheld. Somebody was on sticks, sticks. right? Panning through that. What happens if he hits that? Pieces Ooh. are gonna chew that guy up on right. the sticks. And not to mention you have to film this from another helicopter. Yep. <laughs> you don't just have one bird in the air, you have two birds in the air. The awareness of your vehicle. Don't and this is maybe it. 70s, right? So you had all these post-Vietnam era pilots that were just doing nothing but helicopter work in Vietnam. They were gnarly, you know, having to dive in quick, get people off and, or deploy them out quick. It's next level and I'm telling you, it's coming from that, those post-Vietnam, that those Vietnam pilots. It is different, man. Back then, there was nobody watching for safety and everybody was taking big chances. They didn't have time or money, you know, and, but right. the expectation was always there and you had, you know, men and women out there trying to push the envelope and they wanted to be super cool. They wanted to do something spectacle that you want to go see. Man, respect, you know, right. respect. So this part's in Mexico City, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I think things like this for me when I see this now, yeah, you probably couldn't do this. A, because you couldn't lock up the airspace, you know, because of, right. yeah, you'd have to be out in the middle of the desert somewhere. And B, because it's super expensive to shoot this. Yeah. So, we always ask, you know, for people to recommend stunts or movies, things like that. But we've talked about eras of action and stunt work. And let's go all the way back to the 70s. I'm looking for the, the older of you in the audience. Can you recommend some stunts from the 70s that we should be taking a look at? in our next episode of Stuntmen React, or Stuntwomen React. Fred North is the premier helicopter camera pilot, and he's done all of the Fast and Furious. When we were doing Fast and Furious 8 in Cuba, first movie to film in Cuba, American movie to film in Cuba since the 50s, I think. When he rocked that helicopter off the Malacone and was like five feet off the deck, I swear to God, those Cubans thought we were coming to attack them. <laughs> you know, they see the Russian, like, oh my God. And I had so much fun there, and the, the, with the Cuban people were just beautiful and, and genuine. Hola! 
They haven't ever done anything like this in Cuba before. I mean, this is a full-on huge Hollywood movie with Russian arm. We had Regis Harrington on the e-bike. We had helicopters, drones, everything. We're just blowing things. And, you know, Dennis McCarthy built these cars with LS1 motors, super gnarly fast cars, and they're light in the ass because they're old. Yep. Just hard to keep together, you know, hard to keep it from looping. This is the House of Parliament. And the hell, you see the helicopter yep. shot? Yep. They were all like coming out like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, and I was like, it's cool, bro. <laughs> we're with you. And there's one last shot at the very end when he reverses up that ramp where Fred North, where I thought he might have gotten killed. I thought he was going to get killed. Check up, other guy bails out, slides up to the, that's it. And now we go right up the ramp backwards. This. Oh. So Fred was ro rocking at it so hard, I thought he was, was going to get hit the get thing. By the th oh my god! Wow. I was like, I was like, oh hail Mary! I was starting to throw my phone on the floors. That I would have to jump in and try to swim to get him. See, <laughs> he's in a helicopter flying towards yeah, his car. Right to it, right to, to it, right to it. Whew. Wow! Like who jumps a car backwards on fire? <laughs> I guess we do. Yes. <laughs> That's rad. That's so crazy. Hit him with it. Now, we did a, a punch, punch episode on car stunts and drone filming. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, I was in the editing room for day shift and my wingman calls me because, hey boss, you know they're doing a shot for shot thing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm cutting it. But then I found out it was a promotional thing and I'm super grateful and I think you guys killed it. So oh, thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, my brothers. Thank you, my brothers. And sorry for being a crotchety old redneck. No, this is, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's a, the joie de vivre that you bring to things. Right? Was that French? It was a little bit Holy French. Holy shit. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a shot coming up where we use the drone, Tommy FPV from Wild Rabbit. Tommy Tibioth is a dear friend. He's been on the road with us now quite a bit. Check out this. I love this. Love that shot. We threw the camera out of the sunroof. Was that just an idea on the day? Like, wait. Well, no, I thought about it from before, and okay. I said, can we? We tested. We had tested that. Like, stuff like flying between the trees there, like having all the foreground elements, the near misses with the drone. You think about the audience's perspective, it's been the same in vehicular sequences since 89, since the implementation of the Russian arm of the Ukraine, which right. is a high-performance vehicle with a crane on it with a two or four axis head. The FPV has been the most dramatic perspective change, I think, since the Russian arm. Mm -hmm. And we just it just came a few years ago, so I know Michael Bay's been using it, I know I've been using it, I know a lot of people have been using it. One of the things I love that you do with your drone work, you let it tell a story where like the shot evolves. Like, this shot, Ooh, yeah. watch this shot It's like right we're on the cars, and we get a sense of spacing and geography and yep. geometry. And here come the motorcycles. And yeah, and then we, whoop, then we shift That's subjects right. here. I That's love right. it. That's right. I wanted everything to go over, around, through. You saw when the truck drove, I had this shot in the suspension. Yeah. But just putting the camera where you can't normally have the camera, get, letting the audience see that perspective, for me, is great action filmmaking. Yeah. Like getting, letting the audience see things that they don't normally see. Yeah. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Yep. Yep. So this is, when I was talking about animatic previs, it was this sequence that I animated previs for. Oh, Woo, there it is. There it is. <laughs> you know, it was funny. <laughs> I had to fight to keep that in the movie. Really? I had to fight that to keep stuff. that shot in the movie. It's so funny, because like, I love these moments. And not just that, you see the whole fender coming off the yeah, front. Like, yeah. Another, yeah. Uh, just is that real fire, too? Was that actually uh, it was, there was a little fire element, and then I think we enhanced. Okay. There was a little bit of and you can see how it fades. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, but what I was saying about visual effects, as a stunt coordinator, I'm not a fan of animatic previs because they're not responsible and I am. Mm -hmm. But as a director, I understand how important that tool is and having smart people coming and giving ideas right. for that. So I just want to clarify that. As a director, I've used, I use animatic previs and I'm happy to use it and I'm grateful for it. But sometimes the director, you know, in, if they don't swim in the action pond with us, they don't know how deep that water is and all the big sharks that swim at the bottom. Right. They could, they could exactly. get you. We need to manage that as stunt performers. We need to work together with animatic previs so we're, we're not putting each other in awkward positions. Watch, this is good. We ratcheted a dummy into yes. the, the overpass. 
which we weren't supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's better to say sorry than please sometimes. And yep. then there's this one right here. We doesn't see this. Bingo, gringo. Yeah. Sorry, thanks for coming. There you go. And that was so our car good. chase. So I was super, super stoked. In the 90s, when I was coming up as a stuntman, we'd be doing car chases in the valley in downtown LA all the time. And the valley for me is one of the first places I moved when I got out of the army. It was this trippy, exotic, weird, hot place that I fell in love with LA from. I wanted to create that same mystique in my yep. movie. So anywhere people can like follow you? Or oh, I'm on Instagram, JJ Loco Perry. All right. Whew. Thank you so much, JJ, for coming in. I mean, it's always a learning experience whenever I'm sitting across from you or next to you, and it didn't change today. So thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you, big bro, and I can't wait to see you again. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You can get it out of this handshake. Yeah. Heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one.